Hey world, this is Michael Gregory. We were about to spend a whole day with this guy. So these are your amps for the day. I wanted to do 10 amps today, but we just have nine. All right, so we are checking out the Rock Amps Studio Lead. And you had some questions about that thing. Oh, I like that. <laughs> wow. That's some Ted Templeman reverb right there. <coughs> Ted would be proud. So the first things that strike me is the dual channel and there's a channel switching button or a channel combining. And I don't know if that's true, just combining or if that's stacking you know, one into the other. I think it's a parallel thing and not okay. a series thing, okay. if that's what you're yeah. getting at. I dabble in guitar. I used to play guitar a lot. so. If I sound stupid when it comes to these amps, it's just because I just don't use them. Which is why I have you here today. That's nice. How does it sound with the reverb all the way up doing that? That is all the way up. Oh, that's all the way up? That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. That is a lot of reverb. Yeah, that's like a 100% wet sand on a. Yeah, it really port. is. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a parallel process. Okay. So, which is interesting because really sometimes when I'm recording, I like to take a really dirty channel and then put a really clean channel on there too and it and it emphasizes it and makes it clear gives it clarity yeah it gives it the clarity that you're looking for a lot especially of times. on the tack because that usually gets so squashed yeah and it just gives it more punch and more yeah more clarity i don't know how to describe it but it's a whole different sound and that would be a parallel process. Okay. You know, with a, a parallel clean track to a parallel dirty track. Right. So maybe we can play with that and see if this does the same type of thing. And then the other thing you were asking about. Um, oh, there's a... Uh, the uh, mid-range. Yeah, the mid-range. There's... Looks like a high and a low mid in the sweeps. Oh, is there a high mid and a low mid and a sweep? So there's three knobs? No, or is there's it just a high two knobs. And a low, but each one looks like each one there's uh, frequency markings on it. Oh, okay. Like made to find a cue. And is that with the with the mid range cut or boosted? That's cut. Yeah, I, I kind of heard a cut. It just on one, you just have it on one channel. Yeah. Wow. That got farty real quick. Yeah, it's like a wah wah <laughs> half open. Then the other one. Wow, so there, there's two independent knobs. That's a wall wall right there. AM radio? Yeah. Wow, it's almost like you're a bass player all of a sudden. So yeah, so this is just a parametric equalizer. It's 
what that is. It's actually semi-parametric because you can't adjust the Q. Right. You can't adjust the width. Exactly. Of the frequency. So they call it semi-parametric. Semi All right. Carry on. It's pretty dramatic. Yeah. The bass and the treble have a center detent on the knob. So it's cut and boost. Yeah. But the mid-range isn't detented on the level knob? It's just continuous? Yeah. Okay. Oh. This amp, I'm guessing, can you find anything on this amp? Quote rock amps, quote studio lead, because it won't pop up otherwise. And it looks like the master volume is only for channel B. Oh, so the other the lead. other one is a gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That just went to a whole different place. Whoa. It does say rock. <laughs> That's definitely rock. That's that mid-range control, huh? Wow, at that low of a volume, too. Yeah, I cranked the mid-range and all the overtones. Are... Yeah, at that low of a volume. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, uh, you can hear that fifth yeah, above it. definitely. And you can hear in the lead, too. Yeah. Brian Mayish, huh? Yeah, it does a little bit. What is going on there? Oh. <laughs> what is that all about? Do you have an explanation for that? Because I don't. Yeah, I've got the mid range, the sweep, all the way to the bass. Oh, okay. And there's your AM radio. Oh, wow. It's all fizz. <laughs> That's a cool effect. That would cut through a mix. Yeah. Like a knife. Well, I'm thinking even like blend, with the blending feature on here, if you had that on one channel and then more of a typical tone on yeah. the other channel. And just and that might be the reasoning for the master volume only on one channel, so you can get yeah. the right blend between the two channels. Yeah, because a lot of times the two channel amp will share an EQ section. Yeah. And it's just a compromise. And, Th and this might be like a whole parallel thing where you can get you can get that and you can get that's weird the reverb how it was so d uh, dramatic on the clean channel that's all the way up wow now it finally sounds like a van halen rigger <laughs> Careful. 
Good gosh, that's with the volume on like two. Go ahead. <laughs> Get your earplugs in. <laughs> on four. Yeah. This thing's a beast. The little amount of information I could find on these amps, that's always the one thing, is just they're loud. So, yeah. So, I'm really, 10 being, like, the the most kick-ass amplifier you've ever played through in your life. Zero being the worst, like, possible amp you've okay, ever played you're like where does this thing sit i would say like a five that's about where i was putting it too yeah because it's got decent clean and distorted sounds yeah growing up in the era that i did my ears are tuned mainly to tube amps yeah and so um that's kind of what keeps this at a five yeah now if this circuit were tube um, you know, then that would probably raise that up. But, um, I mean, like as a kid playing in bands, I would have loved to have something, you know, this loud that was foot switchable. Yeah. 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 I feel the same way. The whole novelty thing I think about that amp is just the channel combining yeah. thing, which I'd like to, maybe if we can move into that a little bit and see how that works. Yeah. There's both. So you can hear that clean attack, but there's that but there's body a sustain, of the note. Yeah. Now, how, much, 
how much of that hair can you add or subtract? Oh. See, that's crazy. That's, I do that. If, if this amp sounded better, like, like somebody just needs to do a tube amp like that. Yeah, see, there, uh, the dirty channels, it's dimed. Okay. So. So. How are you adjusting the ratio between the two sounds? Uh, the only way I really think that I can is to be the master. The master on the clean one or the or the dirty one? Well, the master only applies to the dirty one. To the dirty one. Yeah. Okay. Is it, that sounds really cool. Like when you're doing that rhythm stuff and you got the clean way up there, and then you have that little bit of that yeah. mixed in. If it had a better sound, you know, yeah. Let me hear it, let me hear it uh, with like maybe a 50 50 ratio of the clean and dirty. I think that's what we're at now. Let me hear it um, favoring the dirty 70 30. I can dial the clean out. Now, how does that mid-range sweep? Doesn't affect the clean as dramatically. Oh. Dirty channel. Yeah. So you could almost make that dirty channel a little bit muddy. Yeah. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. See, now that's a unique sound right there yeah. that you can't do with really any other No, amp, you'd have to think. cut two tracks. Yeah. Or split your signal. Yeah. You can actually do harmony in more, more complex chords because you got the clean. To me, that's a whole interesting aspect of that amp is just the blending, just that blending feature. Yeah. So, what's your favorite setting on here? Um, or do you have one? <laughs> Is your favorite setting off? <laughs> <laughs> I think I does the dirty better. And that's that's kind of cool because it sounds like a half cocked wall. Yeah. You know? I used to have a wah pedal that I took out and I put yeah. it in a box and and just turned it, it into there. a knob. Yeah. And then you could just find that sweet spot. Uh, yeah. And click it on. Cool. Should we move on? You've heard enough of that one. Yep. <laughs>